Hi, everyone. Welcome back to DMG's podcast, Bootstraps in Business. I'm Savannah Jones, and today we're speaking with Christine Drazen, Republican candidate for governor of Oregon. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about some of the challenges that businesses are facing here in Oregon, some of the solutions and visions you have for solving those. And we're going to touch a little bit on baseball today. But before before we jump into all of that, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about you uh, in a nutshell, and then we can jump right in. Yeah, thank you, Savannah. I am a, a native Oregonian. I'm originally from Klamath Falls, and I usually start that far back. Uh, because it's just important to me that uh, as people are getting to know me and as I'm introducing myself in this race, that people know that um, I'm really a small town girl. And my uh, my love for for all of Oregon uh, is deep, but I have a I have a special place in my heart for the rural parts of our state. Um, I am a graduate of George Fox and again, a terrific school, and I have had the opportunity to serve as the House Republican leader. That's the that's the resume version of what I'm about, but I think what Oregonians need to know in this race is that I'm in this because I want to make life better for Oregonians. I want to improve quality of life no matter who you are, no matter what your party affiliation is, no matter what part of the state you live in. There's a very real opportunity right now uh, for us to actually choose a different direction for our state and to begin to solve these problems that we've been facing in a way that um, that doesn't leave people behind and and has uh, the ability to be a long-term solution when we work together. So I'm I'm grateful to be in this race and I appreciate the opportunity to to be on today. Well, let's talk about what you see and what you hear are challenges that Oregon businesses are facing right now. Like what are the top issues that you are hearing most about? Yeah, everybody talks to me about certainty. And there's been so many new regulations, uh, so many new taxes recently, so much change in their business environment that long-term planning and the, the ability to grow their business and choose to invest in Oregon for that next level of growth has really been called into question. Uh, people talk to me all the time about the reasons for that, but but it comes down to a couple of different things. And most of it is taxation and regulation. And we certainly saw that on uh, in the analysis after Intel made the decision to expand in Ohio, that um, that they they took a look at what some of those factors were. Certainly, land use was one of them. But they also had real concerns about their abil- ability to invest in Oregon at that level and and have any certainty at all about the tax environment. Uh, or the regulatory environment they'd be facing. That's across sectors. You also add to that challenges that people are facing for workforce. So we have, you know, increased costs and and all these inputs are in- increasing. Then at the same time, they are had they're having a shrinking workforce. And so that is a huge challenge right now. Whether or not they're trained, whether or not they whether or not they learn on the job. Um, folks are just desperate for people to come in and be willing not just to accept the job, but to do the work. And, and, and those are the challenges people are talking to me about. So we have got to continue to recognize we have to have strong high schools that lead to the pipeline of, of career or education or, or technical education and get folks uh, continuing to be engaged in the dignity of work across the spectrum. And what are some solutions that you have worked on prior to this and kind of your vision for the future? Like, what are you going to jump right into? Yeah, the first thing we'll do in the first 100 days is to review rules and regulations that are that are impacting our state. And that is going to be a really critical, uh, critical undertaking. We we know that our that the current uh, administration has taken an approach to government that says we want businesses to do exactly what we say in a way that isn't just about safety it isn't just about you know uh, aligning with non-discrimination or whatever the standard might be but it really is about a political approach to business that says businesses in fact aren't going to <clears throat> serve their employees well and they're not going to serve the public well, and they're not going to do right by the environment. Well, I don't look at it that way. Um, but the heavy-handed approach to our business has been primarily through rules and regulations. So I will, you know, tear up Kate Brown's executive order on cap and trade on day one to ensure that 
that we that we don't harm businesses long term and that we're not taking on an undue responsibility for our part of the climate challenge that we're under. Um, Oregon is a very green state and we're already doing our part there. Uh, businesses and families shouldn't have to bear the brunt of that. So we're talking rules and regulations and, uh, and, and certainly we'll veto any new tax increases, but we've got to support education. We've got to roll back rules, rules and regulations. And specifically, Portland obviously is a money generator here in Oregon. Um, a lot of businesses downtown having issues with crime and homeless uh, situations. Um, what does that look like? Yeah, I ha- I am committed to declaring a homelessness state of emergency. Now, the reason I'm taking that approach is because it allows me to align resources at a state level to support local uh, local efforts, and so and it allows me to align investments at a state level as well. And so we have right now. We all know it's a crisis. We know it's an emergency. But what we haven't had is a state level leadership on this issue. We've really kicked it down the road to local leaders to bear the brunt of having to navigate this challenge and this crisis. They haven't had enough support from the state. All they've gotten from the state are mandates. I mean, my opponent in this race, Tina Kotek, uh, was uh, was was the brains behind the legalization of tent camping. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't improve quality of life for anyone. And in fact, it doesn't offer dignity to the people that are living on our streets, but that was her response. And so we have we have to increase, continue to increase access to bed space. We have to continue to increase access to supportive housing, wraparound services, all of the all of the compassionate part of this we have to do. But at the same time, we have to be able to <clears throat> provide accountability and ensure that if people dec- decline access to services, that they are no longer enabled and able to choose to live on our streets. And that's what's been happening recently. And just to touch on uh, Intel again, uh, pro-business, uh, Intel mm-hmm. kind of looked at us, not really from my understanding, um, Oregon didn't really do a really good job of reaching out and and wooing them and and um, giving them resources and sources and information about why and how it could have worked for Intel. So do you have a pro-business stance uh, issues, solutions at the ready? Yeah, of course. And, you know, when it comes to Intel, um, I think it's become clearer and clearer that the governor didn't want them to grow here. She didn't reach out to them. She didn't. She did not have that relationship. I will I will have a strong relationship with businesses across our state. I'll be recruiting from other places and I'll be and I will be approaching business as, in a way that says, how can we help you grow? And that's a proactive approach to aligning with businesses and better understanding what their needs are. And that's a that's a question of leadership. And I'm committed to doing that. Well, uh, jumping off on that point, I want to touch on the Portland Diamond Project and uh, whether or not you support that. And if you do, what does that look like? Yeah, you know, we have uh, <clears throat> had this under consideration for a long time in the state of Oregon, as you know. Um, I, I think it would be fantastic uh, to have uh, to have Major League Baseball come to come to Portland. I think the Portland Diamond Project is an exciting project. Uh, for, for it for it to happen, though, I believe that we really do have to get very serious about Portland. Uh, we have got to uh, resolve our homeless crisis in in our in our urban core there. Uh, I say all the time we need homelessness to be rare and temporary and for a project like the Portland Diamond Project to really take off for people to want to go to go to the ballpark. uh, We need to have livable community. We need to have an area that's safe. We need to have more police on the roads. We need we need to have our our homeless either in shelters or transitioned to uh, long term stability. Uh, We cannot continue to have the experience that we're having right now in downtown Portland where we restaurants are closed and people are not walking the streets and, and Portlanders themselves aren't don't feel safe. And so we have serious work to do to, to really right the ship there. I recently had a conversation with Mayor Wheeler about his approach to homelessness. They did a point in time count recently that they used to have around 350 of those large encampments in our city. Now that's it's upwards of 700 and growing by the day. And so his approach that he's announcing is is going to is going to be to clear the streets and to create campuses, very 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 large encampments. And 
Uh, whether or not that's successful, I cannot begin to predict. It's probably all about how it's implemented and whether or not there's adequate security, whether or not it's open air drug use, those kinds of things uh, occurring in, in those large encampments. But what he's trying to do is act. And that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that he isn't just turning a blind eye to this anymore and that he's engaging in this challenge. We need leadership. We don't need perfection on that issue. We need progress on that issue and to just commit and be ten, uh, tenacious about it. And so, you know, when it when it comes to uh, an undertaking uh, like bringing Major League Baseball to Portland, it's exciting. I, I believe that uh, that Oregon Oregon would be a terrific market uh, for baseball, and and it would and it would and it would certainly add value to our state and our community. Uh, between here and there, though, we got we got to we got to take care of some housekeeping items. Right. Well, is there anything else that you want to add or let our viewers know before we um, get on with business today? And I, I just I just want to say that uh, I, I just appreciate the opportunity to be an advocate on behalf of Oregonians, Oregon families, Oregon businesses right now. We need a new direction in our state. And this race is is really, really, really simple for people that aren't paying attention yet. It's not it's not about partisanship. It's not about the color of your jersey. It's not red, blue or purple. This race really comes down to this. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? And if the answer is yes, then you have two choices. Like you can kind of pick your flavor. There's two status quo folks that are lifelong Democrats that just absolutely would continue into a third term of Kate Brown. But if you want change, if you want our state to really go in a new direction, I'm asking Oregonians to do something that they haven't done in a while. And that's to vote for a Republican, elect a Republican to restore balance in our state, and to stand up for businesses and families that need a new direction and new, need change in the leadership of our state. So thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation with you today. I appreciate it, Christine. Thanks so much. Good luck. And if you'd like to have any more information about Christine Drazen and her run for governor here in Oregon, you can check out the show notes. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, as always, for checking out DMG's Bootstraps and Business. If you'd like to find out more about our guests, DMG, or these podcasts, just check out the show notes. Thank you.